Uh, my name is John Herkey. Uh, just some brief background about who who this guy is that uh, you're randomly talking to this morning. Um, yeah, my, my background is a little interesting. I was a computer networking engineer in the military. Uh, I went up, uh, go in the middle of nowhere, shoot up to satellites, gra grab an uplink, deploy networks in the middle of, you know, just to, you know, think about an abandoned field of nothing. And then all of a sudden you have uh, internet and phones and everything on your computer systems. Um, I went to go, we worked for United Health Group. Uh, shortly after that as a networking engineer, um, got really bored really fast, became an entrepreneur in residence. So building healthcare startups inside of this big healthcare company. Uh, what we ran into was emerging technologies really disrupting different uh, sectors, including healthcare. And so uh, we we broke off of this group and created a, a, a division called the Advanced Technology Collaborative that was solely focused on applying uh, emerging technologies. So if we think about emerging technologies, when the internet came out, people are like, what the heck is this internet? Why do we care? How's it applicable to us? What's this thing called a web page? Do we need a web page? I don't know if we need a web page. Uh, so as, as emerging technology came out uh, in this day of age, we got AI and blockchain. Uh, AI has like natural language processing, machine learning, deep learning, computer vision. Uh, there's so many things in AI, uh, graph databases, internet of things. Um, the business doesn't understand uh, how to harness these technologies. And so our focus was really a, about harnessing the, the technologies um, and, and fitting them into the businesses. And of course, I went back into sort of that networking space of Graph um, at United Health Group and uh, was there for, for, I think, a total of six and a half years at United Health Group. And then um, got headhunted by TigerGraph to come work on their TigerGraph team. We built a bunch of developer teams in, inside of United Health Group uh, building uh, graph solutions. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the graph solutions that we built um, so you can, you can learn from our experience. So that's a short intro about myself. Uh, if you want to get connected, you can just connect, me, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn if you want to ask additional questions on this workshop. So uh, hopefully... Everybody's got uh, part one of the TG Cloud, but I'll, you know, I'll go through a little bit of how to, um, you know, sign up uh, for those that haven't uh, signed up yet. This is going to be an interactive workshop, um, so I thought it would be a good idea to uh, give some brief context about Graph and how Graph is being used in the industry, different use cases, and why use Graph. Um, and then what we'll do is actually dive into a, an open source project, and so. Um, you know, last week I, I, I went and scoured the internet for something that would be really interesting. Um, I landed on this ALM simulator. So this is a simulator for bank transactions and money laundering patterns. So I thought it'd be a really good exercise to think about, okay, they provide some data. How do we deconstruct this data? Think about it in graph terms, build a graph solution. Um, and then do some feature set extraction so we can do some machine learning. So we'll get to uh, not only look at the data, but we'll dive into how to break it down. Um, don't worry about uh, if you're from the business side or maybe you're highly technical, uh, everybody will be able to follow along. Um, this is all gonna be uh, no code, right? So I have code written there, but it's pretty much gonna be copy paste or press a button. Uh, when we're designing the graph solution, it's really just gonna be using GUI tools. And so we're gonna do drag and drop. Um, so don't worry about like, oh, am I gonna have enough skills to be able to follow along on this workshop? We are truly going from zero uh, to 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 being able to do feature extractions, right? So um, everybody will have the ability to follow along. So if you haven't gone to tgcloud.io uh, and you're going there right now, so go to https dot uh, or slash slash tigergraph cloud tgcloud.io. Uh, you'll be prompted with a sign up page. So uh, everybody, um, just go open your other window. Go on that link, click on sign up, um, and then what you want to do is uh, get into the dashboard. So once you get into the dashboard, we'll be sort of set up for uh, this part of the, um, you know, getting started for the workshop. So with that being said, do that on the background. I also have a getting started guide. Let me include this uh, as well. So I'm going to break out of this. I'm going to put this in chat. So if you get confused, or can't follow along, you can actually just go and follow this guide as well. So this will help you uh, with getting started. All right. So I want to do a little bit of intros to graphs. So while everyone's signing up, just a little intro to graph. 
what, why, and where? What are graph databases? Um, a lot of folks probably um, haven't had any exposure to graph databases. Um, where are, you know, why are you, why would you use a graph database versus other graph databases? Uh, where are graph databases being used? So what we're going to do is deconstruct some of those things. I want you to get to the, the thought process of thinking about graphs and how you would engineer a graph. Um, just trying to get you ready for when we get into the workshop. Uh, when we look at the data, you can start to think through some of the data on how you might want to model it. Of course, I'll walk you through every, every step of the way. I do have some cheat codes. <laughs> so if you do fall behind at any point in the workshop, uh, you can execute this cheat code and literally be uh, in front of the whole class and, and have the whole solution ready for you. So you, you know, don't worry if you fall behind. We're going to go through this. I'll try to keep it at a, a, at a pace that everybody can fall along with. Um, but if you do fall behind, don't worry. Uh, just you know, execute the cheat code, and you'll you'll be right right up to where everyone else is. Uh, so, what are graph databases? So, on the left hand side, you have the the relational databases, uh, which is more of a rigid schema. If we want to add stuff, you have to modify the whole the whole the whole solution. It's uh, really good for transactions. Really good for transactions. Uh, but poor performance for deep analytics. So when you have to you join all these different tables together and you're traversing and you're trying to find data that is related to one another, it's a little funny because we're talking about relational databases. Uh, but when we are looking at highly related data, it's you know it's not the optimal solution when you have to do multi joins across 24 different tables to find out your information. Um, good luck trying to do that in real time. You have key value data store or databases, which are highly fluid uh, schemas, no schemas. So you can add more data to it. It's high performance for simple transactions, but poor performance for uh, deeper analytics. Far right side, we have graph databases. Um, so you know, one thing you'll notice is that we have these nodes um, that are related to other nodes. Uh, those are the relationships. So sometimes you'll hear, hear the word node or vertices. Um, that's referring to the circle. Uh, and then the, the node or vertices have relationships to other nodes and vertices. Uh, this is highly flexible as far as the schema. Let's say we add new data to it and we want to uh, append uh, this data into our model. Um, it's very simple. You could just do a schema change in Tiger Graph, uh, simply add the new data and link it up uh, without really having to you know, re restructure your whole database and rebuild everything uh, from scratch. Uh, we have high performance for complex transactions. Uh, tra uh, Tiger Graph then specific or specifically is ACID compliance. Uh, we have uh, high performance for deep, deep analytics as well. So a little bit about, uh, there's a couple different types of graphs. Uh, what we're gonna be talking about today is a label property graph. Um, label property graphs have the ability to have attributes um, under the vertices or under the edges. Um, so on the right hand side here, you can see an order. And in the order, we have an ID and we have a quantity. Uh, so those are attributes underneath the vertices. And then as you can see on the edge, we also have a date. Um, so we're, we're in this case, we have an order that was accepted at a certain date, and then the payment uh, is included with an ID and, a, and an amount. So you can store these attributes, and then you can store uh, the attributes not only on the vertices, but also the edges. And that's important when you're trying to, uh, you know, look at uh, uh, temporal data. It's really nice to be able to, uh, to put that date on the edge um, and just look at the edges that are um, on the on on the timeline that you're trying to uh, examine. And so on the left hand side, uh, you see that we have the this would be more of like the schema. Um, I think the biggest confusing thing when people start to uh, just before diving in, just trying to think about like uh, the, the graphs, they have these nodes and edges, but then when there's a bunch of because in the graph, you'll see orders, 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 because there's multiple orders, right? So the schema is just representing how the how the nodes and edges are uh, interconnected. So on the left hand side, you can see that's the schema, um, which has a single node, right? It's got a node uh, with the relationships. But when you're actually examining your data, you're going to see a bunch of nodes a bunch of order nodes and a bunch of uh, other nodes that are interconnected. And we'll, we'll dive a little bit deeper into that. So uh, why are uh, why use graph databases? So there's no 
there's no penalty for modeling complexity. Uh, what that really means is <laughs> you can see on the left hand side, this is one of the graphs that we created. Uh, and we had uh, a lot of data from a lot of different store, stored, stored areas of, of data swamps, uh, data lakes, as, as people say, but I, I think it's the, I live in Minnesota, so it's the, the saying is uh, the land of 10,000 lakes. I, I think it's the, the land of 10,000 data lakes. Uh, there's tons of data, data everywhere. Uh, what we're doing is putting that together. Uh, we're able to then interlink it, um, and then we're just traversing that. So all of the the, um, the IDs of the pointers are all stored in memory. You're just traversing the graph. That means that, uh, and this leads into the next one, uh, that you're not, not actually having to join. Everything's sort of interlinked when you put the data into the graph and you're just going through and you're accessing where the data resides. Uh, so if you're struggling by death from joins, if you're doing 24 joins and trying to access stuff in real time, um, good luck, uh, it's not gonna happen. Um, you have uh, that, uh, I'm, sh I'm sure if, you, if you've do dove into the, the relational database and you've had to have those really complex joins, you've probably had to wait a while uh, for all the data because what you're doing is you have to read through all the tables and then find the, the certain elements that you're looking to join uh, and then you eventually join it. So if you're struggling by death from joins, uh, you might want to look at graph databases. If you're doing deep link al analytics where you're looking at uh, maybe transactions to transactions to transactions to transactions to transactions across this and that and this and that, and then um, you know trying to trying to trace a bunch of different things together, uh, that might be a good use case. Or if you're doing a social network and doing a link analysis on on users, or if you're doing uh, you know an e-commerce site where you're trying to understand user behavior across multiple users and what are they looking at and clicking at and and buying. So when you're doing those deep link analysis, uh, that might be a good reason for you to use graph. If you're looking for real-time aggregation, uh, where you want to pull all of this data together that maybe wasn't possible before because you would have to join all of this data together uh, prior, um, that of course is not real time. You wanna be able to, to access that data uh, at the time when you want to, you want to be able to access the real live data when you're actually running your application. So um, if you want real-time aggregation, you might want to look at graph. Uh, you need some flexibility for design, uh, the schema. Uh, you could just append new data onto it. Uh, that might be another reason for graph. And then enhanced machine learning. So we're going to do some uh, discuss, we're going to talk about some some areas that you can do some uh, enhanced machine learning and how it can improve your models by generating new features, and we'll get to that today. So companies graphs graph use cases. Uh, so there's many. These are some of the customers from Tiger Graph. We have Wish, Jaguar, HBO, um, Citrix, Intuit. If you use TurboTax, uh, you're probably using Tiger Graph. Not everybody uses uh, graph databases or graph analytics engines uh, in the same way. Some some people are looking at for more transactionals, uh, transactional. Some people are looking more analytical. HBO, how do you get people back from Game of Thrones? Um, some people are doing predictive analytics or operations. Um, and then there's a mix. There's sometimes where you know the company's using multiple pieces of this. Uh, the last one is, uh, I think, the traditional uh, knowledge graph, right? So uh, can you search across all your data and pull the data together um, to build a knowledge graph? If you think of, of, of uh, Google, Google is, is simply just a knowledge graph with the search on top of it. So we, we talked a little bit about issues with highly complex data uh, in multiple systems. This is where I came from. We had uh, uh, a requirement to pull all of the data together for a patient. So uh, a patient has the, uh, you know, ARCs, <laughs> they, they interact with so many different parts of the healthcare system. They, they could be calling in the call center, they might have a dental claim, they might have a vision claim, they might have a medical, uh, you know, they have medical history information. So, you know, diabetes, um, they might have, uh, prescriptions. They went to a facility. They, uh, you know, they they talked to. They got medication from a certain provider. Uh, so there's all of these touch points within the healthcare system. And our goal was to how do we how do we pull this data, data together um, in real time? So imagine having all of these different systems, uh, and you're told that hey, we want we want all of our data in real time. How do you pull that together? Um, what we did was build a, a graph database for that. And so this is a sample, uh, you know, this is called Cynthia, when we have this in the Tiger Graph open source repository. So if you want to dive into 
uh, looking at modeling healthcare, this is a, a synthetic healthcare model that we generated uh, to pull in some of that data. And so how this would look uh, is that we have a patient, a patient has a prescription. And so uh, they, you know, at this time at the start date of what and the end date of what they were prescribed aspirin or, you know, the patient was uh, prescribed the multivitamin. I just, you know, threw some random names in there. Uh, but this just demonstrates the, um, the patient and the prescription. So I don't know where the prescription is on this. You know, maybe it's called medication here. So the schema is uh, patient to medication, right? So that's the schema. Uh, but when you're actually realizing this as far as like drilling into it as uh, when you're querying your data, the patient itself will have uh, multiple edges and multiple nodes. Uh, in this case, medication, they have two, two medications at, at some point here. And so and now we have some allergies uh, and we have some claims. So for me to be able to pull all of this patient information together, all I'm going to do is hop you know, from my patient to to the all of the nodes that uh, you know I want to access. So what that means is that we can unlock tremendous business value. So um, we have 50 million patients. We have uh, how much data across the healthcare system? And we're pulling that together in 50 milliseconds. So if you think about, uh, you know, if you do a Google search, you see the little milliseconds on top. It's usually like 200 milliseconds. Uh, imagine pulling every single touch point uh, of a patient together in 50 milliseconds. Uh, it, it unlocks tremendous value and tremendous capabilities. Um, so this is an example of a call center. Somebody just called in. Uh, we have a nurse on the end of the line. The nurse wants to have the most up-to-date information to help uh, that patient. Uh, what they could do is they can dive into every single touch point that that person had uh, with the healthcare space. And so the nurse can give the best advice to the patient when uh, they're talking to them over the phone. So we can also do data enrichment using uh, graph, certain graph techniques, and we'll go through some of those today. Um, some are looking at patterns, and so on the right hand side, uh, we have a um, we have a, a provider, we have a claim, and we have a patient, and then we have a claim, and then we have a provider, right? So we're going to look at uh, the provider, and we're going to look at the the timestamp. Um, so this provider uh, filed this claim that was related to this patient. And this claim came after the other claim. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but we have a claim that came after another claim. Um, what we're gonna say then is if this pattern is met, uh, even though we didn't have this data originally in our, in our graph database, there's no data stream that tells us uh, referred by, uh, but we're doing pattern matching uh, to then uh, enrich our data. So we're going to look at the pattern and we're going to uh, create this new edge called referred by. So, uh, you know, Douglas Thomas, Helen Sue, uh, Helen Sue was referred by Douglas Thomas. And so we're looking at patterns to enrich data. Um, the other thing that we can do is look on the left-hand side, we have this hub and community detection. We're actually gonna run some of those algorithms today in the workshop. And so we're, we can run algorithms on our data to determine um, and to enrich by creating new data based off uh, the algorithm's output. So the other things that uh, are very traditional as well, and uh, if, you've, if you think about this, it's really actually doing exactly what Google's doing. Um, so it, let's put, everyone knows about Google. Uh, you have a bunch of web pages, you have a spider or something that's crawling these web pages. What they're doing is pulling out these certain um, keywords or you know, extracting different uh, entities. Um, what they're doing in the background is semantically linking it inside of their uh, knowledge base. Uh, in 2012, Google came out and said, we're, going, we're doing things, not strings. Um, that was their de declaration saying that we're using graph databases in the back end. And so um, this, was, uh, this is just deconstructing uh, these entities. And how you could do this is if you have, uh, you know, in our case, we had nurses notes, we have maybe uh, medical publications, um, we have doctor's notes, we have a bunch of, we have a bunch of unstructured texts that we want to extract a bunch of, um, you know, entities and things about it, maybe their medical concepts, maybe their, their people. Um, what we're going to do is then semantically link it inside of the knowledge graph. 
And then on that, and on after you do that, you can run some algorithms on it. And we're going to run some of this these algorithms today. And uh, what you can do is then derive, you know, what is the top result, right? That's uh, that's essentially what every every big company is doing is they're trying to pull up the top results, whether you're Amazon or Google. All right. So hopefully everybody was able to log into uh, TG Cloud. And what we're going to do is actually spin up a box right now. So I, had, I do have more content that we're going to keep going through. This does take about five minutes to spin up a box. Um, but I hope everybody is at this point where they can see uh, the portal. And I'm going to just check chat to see. OK, no comments right now. All right, perfect. So I'll go to where everyone else is. So this is the dashboard tgcloud.io. Um, so if you go into TG Cloud, you'll you'll log you log in, you get to this dashboard. Um, if you have used TG Cloud before, you'll you'll see like me, you have tons and tons of um, activities and maybe some charges and things like that if you used it. Um, what we're going to do is navigate to my solutions. So tgcloud.io, you logged in, uh, you landed on this dashboard, you're going to click My Solutions. And if you get lost on this process, do look in the chat. We do have the Getting Started blog. It walks you through the same steps. Um, so what we're going to do is click on My Solutions. We're going to click Create Solution. And so it, it's really easy. The uh, way to provision through TG Cloud is only a few clicks. Um, this first page right here is, is about creating a solution. Um, we have the version. In our case, we're going to do 3.0.6. Uh, and we have these starter kits. So if you know after this workshop, you want to sort of explore more um, and maybe do a different workshop or you know check out some like, hey, my, my background is actually in healthcare or my background is in fraud, or maybe my background is more in the, the cybersecurity. Um, what you can do is just choose one of these starter kits. It comes, everything's sort of preloaded, um, meaning that everything's there, the data, the graph, some queries. And what you can do is just sort of play around with that without having to really think too much through how to construct everything or how to set everything up. So TG Cloud just allows you to simplify that process. Um, in our case, what we're doing, because we're doing a custom workshop, we're going to do this from scratch. Uh, we're just going to choose blank V3. So just choose blank V3, and then scroll down, and you want to just click next. All right. So now we now we're prompted with some uh, you know different different th options as far as platforms and uh, different instance types. How big do you want your box to be? Uh, TG Cloud allows us to have a free box, which we're going to use today. Um, so what we're going to do is stick with our defaults. We're not going to use Azure or Cloud. Uh, we're not going to upgrade our box um, unless you really feel the urge to upgrade and you want a super powerful box. But then you have to put your credit card in. Uh, so we'll just stick with the TG Free one. Uh, that's fine. It comes with uh, you know four CPUs and 7.5 gigs of memory, and then I believe 50 50 gigabytes in the hard drive. Um, and TigerGraph does really good with the compression ratio. So if, if you have about 200 gigs of data, it can compress it to about 50 gigs. Uh, maybe 150 gigs of data can com compress to 50 gigs. So um, this should be sufficient for today. We're going to do, uh, I guess you could choose a region because we're global right now. So if you have uh, you know, one of these is a little bit closer to you, feel free to choose a different region. I'm just going to leave mine on, on you know, the defaults, uh, disk size is default. Um, these are grayed out because they're not available for the free version. So pretty much on this page, don't have to click anything except the next button. So we're going to go next. Um, so at this point, you just want to name your solution. Uh, try to give it a unique name. Uh, don't copy my name uh, because what will happen is when we get down to subdomain, uh, we'll have we'll have subdomain conflicts. <clears throat> so maybe just use your last name or something like that. Uh, in this case, what we're just going to do, I'm just going to go, uh, you know, Herky, and then I'll do A M L S I M. So A M L S I M. And then for my, I'm just going to copy and paste. 
For the password, you can set the password to anything you would like to have. Uh, just don't forget that password. Um, so just, just literally, whatever you do, don't forget this password because we're going to actually use the password. So, uh, you know, come up with your password. All right, and then we're at the subdomain. So, uh, what what this allows us to do is have our own subdomain. Uh, when you when you launch this box, it's going to launch a Graph Studio, the the kit that we're going to be using uh, to be able to construct the graph. So, this will be your own custom subdomain. Um, that's why it's important not to have a conflict. Try to keep it unique. Um, if you just do AML sim, somebody else in the workshop might do the same one as you. Uh, there might be some conflicts, so maybe try to make it unique. Uh, do take note of unique only letters, numbers, uh, inner hyphens are allowed. All right. So once you have everything filled out, just click the next button. And you should get to the summary page. All right, so the summary page is just giving an overview. You chose the blank, AWS, free, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so it gives you a little price per hour if you're, you're doing the um, you know a paid version. In our case, we're not, so everything looks good. We'll just hit submit. All right, perfect. So uh, at the bottom, it did say, you know, grab a cup of coffee. Uh, it's going to take a little five, you know, about five minutes. What it's going to actually do is provision this whole box for you, spin everything up. Um, while that's happening, um, what we're going to do is go back into the slides and continue our presentation. And by the time we're done with the presentation and we're in thinking about graphs, we'll go back to the TG Cloud. So at this point, if you are falling behind, Look at the chat. There is a getting started blog. It'll walk you through the steps that we just went through. So where are graph databases being used? What are the use cases? So uh, there's there's tons of you know there's tons of different use cases uh, that are actually some are really unique. Um, the most unique one to me, and I'll talk about it later, is energy management. I just think it's a really cool use case. But I would say the majority of, of folks are looking at uh, the biggest use cases are like AML or or anti money yeah anti money laundering or uh, you know customer three hundred and sixty. Everyone wants, especially in this stage day of age of COVID, uh, you're trying to tie all this information about your users together. Um, you're trying to get insights. Uh, that was a big thing um, in the healthcare space when when uh, COVID hit. And the, what are people classifying COVID as? When it, you know, back in February, March of last year, um, wh who, what are the symptoms? Where is it? Who's 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 catching it? All these different things. Um, you know, customer 360, even from other platforms, HBO. They're just trying to find out how how people are using their platforms and what to. Um, you know, what to recommend people, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. So we're going to do customer. So it's a little odd. People are thinking, well, customer 360 recommendation engine. How does that fit with LinkedIn? Hmm. Well, if you think about, you know, John Herkey here, uh, myself, uh, this is a user, right? And I have a bunch of information together. And in my feed, they're going to recommend me things. And so we're going to just walk through sort of this use case and deconstruct it because I think everybody's familiar with, with um, you know, with LinkedIn. Uh, what's under the hood of LinkedIn? Uh, this is what it looks like. So you have yourself. Um, you're, you're actually highly connected with other people. Um, they might be, and I think in this case, yeah. So we have Microsoft. Uh, these are companies. So this person probably worked at Microsoft, right? Um, this isn't this isn't my subgraph or this isn't my graph here. But, um, you know, this person uh, probably did work at Microsoft uh, because they have this huge connection with a bunch of people. Uh, UC uh, Berkeley, right? So they probably went to UC Berkeley. Um, and so you have this this uh, this 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 person who's connected with other people. And then there's uh, attributes about those people, and you can start to see these clusterings of where people, um, you know, where people were, um, you know, maybe met or connected from. And so you can you can dive into some of those analytics. We're going to actually go through this and break it down. 
Um, so if we're thinking in terms of graphs, let's say I want to build like LinkedIn. So I want to build my own social network um, and I want to, to uh, try to understand how social networks work or how I want to model it um, to be able to build my own social network. That's what we're going to deconstruct. So first, per the first thing is we have a person, right? A person has an ID, uh, first name, last name. There's probably more attributes to a person. Uh, we have a person lives in a city or located in a city. We have city, state, uh, country. So this is a geo tree, city, state, country. Um, there's there's time trees as well. They're sort of graph patterns, uh, how you want to represent things. And so you have these connections between uh, the geo trees and 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 you have uh, the you know if you wanted to where this would be super helpful is. Uh, think about uh, a traditional relational database when you're diving in and you're trying to find all the people through uh, that live in the United States and Minnesota, right? You're going through the database. So you have to read through everything. As in, uh, with the graph, what you can do, uh, there's 50 states, right? We have 50 states. We have 50 states. Uh, we want to start at Minnesota. Uh, then we just go through all of the edges connected from that, so we're reading through, you know, literally 50 states, uh, which is really fast. And then we're finding, you know, all the cities maybe in the state and all the people that live in all the cities that are in the states. So that's how you would, you know, traverse the graph. And that's where it's really important to think about graph modeling. Um, you want to be able to uh, you know, distill things down. There might be times where, let's say, you're always searching on male and female as a gender, right? So you're you're always looking through and trying to find out uh, the people, uh, male or female. Yes, you could store it as an attribute. Um, you could store it as an attribute, but then what you're doing is you have to go through every single time and look for for that attribute of all of the people. It makes more sense to actually break that attribute out into its own vertice because then you have two options and you're only going to crawl across the edges of that specific list that specific uh, attribute that you choose. Um, so there's different ways of modeling um, and that's a little bit off uh, on a tangent, but I just wanted to break break that down a little bit why you would why you'd break that out versus having a single vertex called address and then have everything in there. So we have uh, an organization. So an organization ha uh, is in a city and then a person could work for an organization. And then we're going to this next page. We have posts. Uh, you know, John likes this post. Mohammed's the one who posted it. We also have some tags. So the tags are related to posts. Uh, the post also has some mentions of an organization. So in this particular case, we have Tiger Graph. Um, so you can start to see this, our, our graphs coming together. Um, this isn't a very thorough walkthrough, but I just think it gives you some context of how you could break this down and how you can model it. A person also follows a person, and a person's also connected a person. So that's how the edge you can have edges to the, itself. So you can have a person follows uh, another person, and you could <laughs> you can see all the follows. Uh, we'll go and break that down here after this. We have uh, groups. So people are in groups, and then people are in events. So um, I didn't go through all of these, but if you want to just sort of you know think in graphs and you want to do this exercise, what you can do is. Um, you know, pull up LinkedIn and try to design your own graph and maybe your graph will be a little bit more um, fully flushed out. But this is just sort of giving you a taste of how to break it down. So we're also gonna be looking at, uh, I think this is very helpful too, if you've gone to, you know, you search for people, you find your first connection, second connections, third connections. Um, if you're doing filtering, what does that really mean? So we have John. Uh, John's connected to Sam, Fred, and Jill. And then I can see that John is connected to Dan through Sam. Um, so in the green, what we have is the first, the first sort of connection. In the, in the blue, we have the second connection. And then in the orange, we have the third, the third degree of connection. So you can see that uh, I'm connected to Eric, but he is sort of my third degree of connection. So if you ever wondered what the first, second, or third was, uh, under the hood, this is what it looks like. You have yourself, you're connected to some people, and those people are connected to some people, and those people are connected to some people. So you can start to see how everyone's connected. 
um, and hopefully that color coordination helps you break it down in, in a visual way. And then we get into some algorithms. So I think the super powerful part about Tiger Graph uh, and graph databases are the ability to run these algorithms. Uh, specifically for Tiger Graph, GSQL, which is our, our language, is turning complete. That means you can literally write any algorithm that you would like. Um, you can, and we'll, we'll go into some of these, but you can literally construct, if there's not one there, this is an open source repository. You can, you can tweak it, you can modify it, you can add new ones. Um, and there, there's quite a few that you could do. Uh, we have, uh, for similarity algorithms, the one we'd use a lot is Jacquard or cosine similarity, trying to find similar patients. Um, and then on the right-hand side, so how does this feed work out? Well, so a feed is really trying to understand how to or what it should present to you. Uh, and so if you think about uh, if you think about even using Google, it's trying to feed the top results to you. In the same case with LinkedIn, it's trying to feed the top results. What's what is the most likely thing you click on or interact with? Uh, that's what they're trying to do. So they're using maybe certain metrics to try to try to populate that. In this case, I can see a room bot who finds this interesting. So maybe that, maybe maybe my connections that I'm highly uh, interactive with and engaged with, um, and they are engaging in content. Maybe that's going to populate something higher up in in the the algorithm uh, to determine what to feed me. So we're going to dive into some more use cases here. We have uh, you know Netflix. This is a little bit like HBO. Uh, you've probably all seen the. 99% match. Uh, I like I like sort of sci-fi movies, uh, so um, high match with Stargate. And uh, yeah, so what what is what is this 99% match? How do they calculate it? So you can see on the um, you know the sort of these nodes we have Alex Jing, uh, Kevin, uh, and everybody likes likes a movie. Um, so let's say a person A likes this movie, this movie, and this movie, and then person you know, person B likes this movie, this movie, and this movie, the same ones, but he also likes that movie, right? He likes this other movie, Free Solo, let's say Free Solo. Um, well, these users are really similar. So we ran a cosine similarity. These users are really similar to their tastes. This user liked this specific movie as well. So maybe we should recommend this movie to the other user that's really similar to that user. Um, so that's a, that's a little bit about a cosine similarity and that will be seen in a couple different use cases. Um, in the context of like Amazon, you have products, right? And we have obviously similar, similar uh, tastes or similar users. Um, in, in, in Amazon's case, I don't know specifically how they're capturing all their metrics, but I'm assuming if you stop on a page that has a product, they probably have some kind of metric. If you hover over something on a product and they probably have a time of how long you you held your mouse or, you know, over that specific uh, object, maybe you didn't even click. Um, maybe you did click. Um, so they're tracking users and looking at their patterns, trying to determine, okay, these are similar users, they bought similar things. Um, so maybe we will recommend uh, that to them. One use case I don't talk about is how, how to use this in healthcare. Uh, so in healthcare, you have uh, similar patients, right? You're using a similarity algorithm. Uh, and what you're doing is looking at, uh, let's say this patient just got uh, diagnosed with cancer, right? Um, and let's find all the similar patients to this this patient here. Uh, you know, pre you know, she, let's say it's a female, age 40, diabetes as a precondition um, that uh, you know they they sort of have you know whatever whatever medications they might be on. So you're finding similar patients. They both got diagnosed. Um, with the certain type of cancer, then what you could do is look at the, uh, you know, what was the recommended treatment and who had, uh, out of the most similar patients, who had the best outcome. And maybe we want to recommend the best outcome to this patient based off the similar patients to them. So, you know, recommendations engines aren't just used in social networks and e-commerce. They can be actually used in many different ways in many different industries. Recommendation, this is probably the most famous one, Google, right? We're using a page rank algorithm. Uh, that's what Google, you know, pay, Larry Page. Uh, so they came up with the page rank algorithm. Uh, what, what are the most connections? And then we want to feed those connections uh, to the users uh, that are going to, so this content's going to be most relevant to the user uh, based off this page rank, right? 
this page algorithm. Um, so if you use Google, you probably use some graph. So this is a really interesting use case as well. And so uh, you know, graphs are more than just uh, stitching together the knowledge. They're actually analytical engines. Um, so what they're able to do in this use case is they have all of these nodes that have uh, information. Um, you have sub substations across you know, your whole power grid. You have transformers. Uh, you have connectors. You have all these different things. Uh, and then what you're doing is recalibrating the whole energy grid system in real time. Because uh, TigerRaph is turning complete, what you're actually doing is literally recalibrating. Let's say a node goes down, uh, and that's going to stress out the power system in this way. So we're recalibrating the, the power grid. What do we need to do to, to uh, you know, uh, reroute power? Or maybe we need to add more power. Um, what they're doing is doing this uh, in real time. And so if you want to have this as a not just a knowledge graph, but you want to use it for analytics across your data, uh, that's a good use case as well. And so we're getting towards the ends of the stack and we'll get back into the uh, workshop in just a second here. So a supply chain, uh, you want to map all your different nodes. Let's say a supplier goes down, let's say a, a, a tsunami takes out a supplier. How do we rebalance everything on the um, you know, supply chain? So what that means is we have the supplier supplies uh, supplies for these parts, and then these parts are used in certain products, and then these products are used in certain cars. Uh, so what happens? What's what happens to the supply chain when a certain supplier goes down? You can't get the uh, things for the parts, and the parts then go to the, the the sunroof. How does that affect everything? Can you reroute things? Can we um, can we create? Uh, can we leverage what we do have to create certain cars in this factory uh, versus the other factory because they don't have enough supplies at this one place. Um, so what they're doing is mapping and recalibrating sort of their supply chain in real time. Um, fraud is a huge one, right? We have patterns of fraud. We have users uh, in this right-hand side. We can see that there is an account that is associated with a phone number that is associated with a device. Uh, and then we have some transactions that are using another phone number with that same device that was flagged as fraud. Um, so what we're doing is then, um, you know, maybe act activating some suspicious, uh, you know, investigation flag um, that you might want to dive deeper into. So um, that's just looking at patterns. We're also going to be looking, you can look at patterns as well to, for feature generation. And I think this is really uh, an interesting, un unique point is that we have on the right hand side a bad phone. Uh, so what is a bad phone? It's an empty stable group. Um, what that means is that you don't have these you know, consistent calls to a specific number of phones. Um, so on the left hand side, you can see a stable group is a specific number of phones that they're always communicating back and forth. Um, the bad phone on the right side also has many rejected calls uh, versus the left side where you actually have many calls that are in a group. Uh, so your, your mom called your brother, your brother called your sister, and you can start to see these highly connected entities that are, are related. Um, and the bad phone is, is, has you know, none of those. Um, you have no callbacks. So let's say um, you know, somebody calls, uh, the bad phone has no callbacks. On the, on the left side, we have a good phone. They have long-term phones, so they, there's multiple callbacks on that phone. We also have call, short, short call durations. Uh, on the bad phone, uh, on the good phone, you have a lot of calls with a longer duration. So you can start to look at patterns. Uh, these patterns then can uh, be used for features, right? So we want to generate new features based off patterns, um, and those can enrich our machine learning models. So this is a little bit of a deep dive into like the transactions. So this we're not going to go this deep, but we have the ability to actually look and uh, follow and trace patterns. Right, so we have uh, this this person sent money to this person, 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 and you can start to see these big giant loops that are happening. But eventually, the money all goes back to that that person, right? So they're trying to filter out this money, and the money comes back to that person. So you could start to see these complex uh, patterns. Um, this is just a system overview. So of course, there are, are times where you're actually using a lot of different use cases into your whole product, production system. It's not just a specific one. Um, and you're, you're connecting this all together. You're building feedback loops. And you're, you're, you have rules, uh, machine learning feature generations. You have streaming data. You have flags. Everything's sort of coming together 
into this sort of massive system using a lot of different uh, of, of the use cases. And this is what it actually looks like to the users. So a lot of people get scared because they think, uh, you know, graph databases, this is all you see. Um, but graph is just a database. Uh, just like every other database, this is what a, a traditional user would see for 95% of the times. It's just a UI. So it's just a UI uh, that people can dive into. But what the UI provides is, is tremendous value to that or tremendous access to that, that data behind the scenes. And you're able to do things that you weren't able to do before. All right, so we're going to get it hands on now. So we're actually going to deconstruct, uh, you know, deconstruct the data. We're going to go look at this AML sim, uh, this GitHub repo, uh, and then we're going to look at some data. And I just wanted to walk you through like my perspective as far as um, I, I just stumbled across this project. This project might be interesting to me. Um, how do I think about it? How do I look at the data? How do I model it? How would I start to put this in TG Cloud? How would I put the connections together? How would we write some algorithms or maybe write some queries? Um, and how we would start to get some of the data and then how we would connect it into, into this, this Google Colab. All right, so I'm gonna paste some of these links in, in the chat. So hopefully everyone has access to the chat. And for now, try not to do anything on the Google Colab. We won't go into that right, right away, um, but I'll put it into the chat as well. Click on the GitHub uh, Tiger Graph OSS AML Sim Python Lab. So this one right here. Hopefully this will open right here. Um, so this is, this is the lab that we're gonna be using today. This right here is the cheat code uh, that I'll show you. Um, so this will be able to, if you fall behind, what you'll be able to do is import this um, and then just get caught up. So if you're here right now, hopefully everyone has access to it. And then what you wanna do is click this code and just download zip. So go to, go to this repository, code, download zip. So this will download uh, the CSV files, it'll download the, the Python notebook. Um, I have it in Google Colab, meaning you don't have to run it locally. Um, what we're gonna be able to do is just do a file, save a copy, and then what you can do is run your own instance. It's <clears throat> behind the scenes, it's actually spun up a server. Uh, so you don't actually have to worry about any environmental stuff or having Python or anything on your, your local computer. It's all gonna be ran in the cloud. All right, so after you did code, download, you should see the file there. Uh, let's navigate back to TG Cloud. So we'll go to TG Cloud. We're at My Solutions. You can see that you have this new solution. In my case, it's called Herky-AML Sim. It's ready. And what we're gonna do is simply click on this button right here, Applications. We're gonna click on Graph Studio. So when you do that, this will populate. So now we have our Graph Studio. As I mentioned before, this is the reason you want yours to be unique. Uh, you actually get your own sort of portal. And uh, in this case, mine's called herky-almlsim.i.tgcloud.io. Um, so this is Graph Studio. This is a really easy way for you to be able to um, you know, work with the database without actually really having to code. You can design everything, you can load everything. Um, and that's what we're gonna do today. So let's show you the cheat code right away. Uh, if you feel like you just wanna cheat right away, that's totally fine. Um, but I do wanna walk you through uh, the steps of actually just designing and creating. So if you downloaded this, this file here, you'll see one that's called AML Sim 306. And if you do want to do the cheat code, oh, this is an old version. All right, so if you do wanna do the cheat, you would just do import existing solution. Uh, you would simply choose that one and click open. And then all of a sudden you have the, the full lab that which includes the schema, uh, the data and the queries. Uh, what we're gonna just do is uh, walk through the creation of that. And so 
let me give you one more link because I just want to show you the the data here. All right. You don't have to click on this link because we're just going to talk about it, but I figured I'd share it with you. It's going to be in your um, AML sim demo. So this is this is the this is the AML official sim repository. So you can generate uh, these these uh, synthetic uh, you know banking transactions that possibly are you know possibly are fraud. Uh, what they do is they label the the fraud use cases. So that's super helpful <laughs> if you're doing if you're doing labeled uh, training, right? So you can you can go through this. You can generate a uh, custom. Uh, you know, put in custom parameters, generate custom uh, AML simulations based off those parameters. Uh, what we're just doing is we're going to actually just look at some pre-created data. Um, so if I can get back to the data example, the one that we're using for this workshop is this 10K 1 million edges. Um, maybe the click isn't working. We'll try clicking here. All right, 10K, 1 million edges. So let's just take a look at this data. What is, what, what's in this data? All right, accounts. So, you know, when I start to think, I, I like to look at data first. Um, that's usually my first step is I have some kind of data. I have something in mind. Um, you know, in this case, I'm thinking about, uh, okay, I'm building an AML simulator. Um, just looking at the CSV files, they had accounts, transactions, alerts. Okay, great. So, you know, it's going to incorporate some of these. Um, and then I look at the data and I think about, okay, so uh, what would I break out into vertices? What would I break out into uh, attributes? And what would I break out into edges? Um, you know, and just taking a first pass, I have, you know, accounts. Um, accounts, I'm assuming account has, uh, okay, an initial balance. I see that we have a customer. A customer probably has an account. Um, so I'm thinking in my mind, and I'm just walking you through some of the things that I think about. So a uh, customer has an account. An account has a balance. Okay, a customer probably has is, or is related uh, or is based into a country. Um, here's some more account information. So if I have an account, um, maybe I have some account types. Um, we have some other flags, and this is probably just uh, this is probably because it's uh, the AML simulator has the flags for fraud or transaction behavior. I don't think you might normally typically see that. Um, so I'll look at that one. What we'll do is look at maybe some transactions. Uh oh, doesn't want to show me those. Let's go to a smaller one. Should be the same. All right, so we'll look at some transactions. You don't have to do any of this. We're just sort of going through the workshop right now of, of looking at this data. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll actually, I have those files in that uh, original repository. So I, uh, we have transactions, we have transactions IDs. We have, uh, okay, some more account information. So if we think about an account, we have uh, a sender account, we have a receiver account. Those are probably tied to transactions. Uh, so we have an account sends uh, a transaction is based off an account sender. And then we have, okay, we have uh, an account uh, and we have a receiver. So there's probably an edge there. Um, transaction type, that might be, uh, if we have a transaction, that might be an attribute on the edge itself. Um, or, or it could be an attribute in the, in the transaction vertex. Uh, we have TX amount, okay. Uh, we have some timestamps. It's a little odd for timestamps. They just put like zero, one, two, three, four, five. Not quite sure why the data was like that. Um, I found that a little bit odd, uh, but I guess times timestamps are related to we have related to the transactions. Um, so yeah, I just sort of look at the data first. Uh, look at some alerts. We have an alert. Uh, this so everything that has an ID could be uh, a vertex. In this case, we have an alert ID. Um, we have an alert type, so that's probably an attribute. Um, we have an alert tied to a transaction, right? So this alert 14 uh, is tied to this transaction ID. So there's probably going to be an edge between alert and transaction. And of course, there's going to be an edge between a transaction and a, uh, an account. Um, yep, so, okay, yeah, so again, those weird timestamps. So that's just looking at the data. That's, that's sort of the first step. 
Um, what I do sometimes is just have sort of this data open uh, while I'm modeling. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I could do it with shared screen here, but let's go, let's go start to dive into building this schema. So let's go back to tgcloud.io. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Go back to your graph studio. You wanna go to your custom graph studio. You don't need to go back to tgcloud.io. Um, we'll go over to the navigate to design schema. So our design schema is actually gonna be modeling. Um, and so what we're gonna do is sort of, I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit to look at this data um, and to do the modeling here. So uh, what we're gonna do is click on this plus, click on the plus here, and this will add a vertex. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we saw that we had customer, we had a customer. So you click on this plus here, we're gonna give it a vertex type name, which is customer. And what we'll also do is just have as attribute. We'll leave the we'll leave the primary ID as string. So customer ID as string, and then we'll click plus. So we have a customer. Again, we're gonna go click up here, and we're going to go to add global vertex type. And if we go back to our Let's see if we can go back to our data. What we did have was, transaction CSV, accounts. All right, we have country. So we could go country, do as attribute. So this is just, this is just saying that we want the ID to be as attribute. We'll click plus. And then we have this next button, which is gonna be the edge creation, right? So we want to create an edge between a customer in a country. So we'll call this call this based in based in uh, at this time you can choose to have it directed or undirected if you want it a directed edge you could you could do this with the the direction uh, just click the, the this button right here uh, but we're just going to leave it as undirected um, and then what we're going to do is click the add button hopefully everyone's following along <laughs> Uh, again, remember there is the cheat, and we might implement the cheat if we have the uh, restriction on time here. But I do want to show if you were to think about how to load this data in uh, and how to model it. So the next thing we have is we have the customer, we have a country, we have the, the customer is based in. The customers did have those accounts. Um, so let's look at the accounts. So we have an account ID, uh, account type, Right, so maybe the next the next part is that we we'll want an account um, with some of this these uh, these attributes. Right, so what we'll do next is we'll click the plus again. So we're just going to be we're just designing our schema right now uh, in the design schema. So we'll, what we'll do is add accounts, and we'll do add attribute as an attribute. We'll also want to include. Uh, if we saw here, we have account ID, which is covered. We have an account type, initial balance. Account type and initial balance. Okay, so maybe you wanna add those as well. Init balance. And let's do a double. And we had an account type. And string. All right. So we have a, a customer. We have some accounts. All right. So then we want to have a customer has a, an account. So what we're going to do is add the edge here. So if we go back up to the edge, go to customer, click on customer and then click on count, you'll see this edge show up. 
And um, what we'll do is what we'll do is we'll just do a few of these. Uh, we won't do them all. What we'll do is implement the cheat here in just a second. I just want to make sure if you did want to do this, you would be able to follow along as far as uh, creating this custom uh, graph, uh, and you would be able to use these icons to be able to to put that data in there. Um, so we'll just call this. We'll just call this uh, customer has. Let's call it has account. So I think what we'll do after this is we'll publish. So I won't build the whole the full thing here because I think we're going to just go to uh, do that sheet and then we'll have the full schema um, because there's a lot of different steps. So we'll just sort of do a very uh, short preview of doing the manual version. Um, so we have the customer, we have a country, uh, we have an account. Then what we want to do is we want to hit this publish. So this will be saving all of the data uh, or the data schema, right? So we have our schema built. Um, this is in global view. So you're publishing in global. Why that's important is we, ha we have the ability to do multi-graphs. Uh, so we might have uh, a specific business unit that has this graph and that graph. Um, and then they have overlapping attributes. So you're having the shared entities between different graphs. Um, so we're, we're publishing in this global schema. So once we have a, our vertices and some edges, just click this Publish Schema button. And what it's doing is then publishing that schema. So the next thing we want to do, and I know we're missing some of these vertices and, and edges, but we'll, we'll get to the rest of them here shortly, is we'll want to create a graph. So create a graph. In our case, we'll just call it AMLSM. Um, ML sim, and let's just load everything that we have. So all of these vertices and edges that we just created globally, we also want to incorporate them in AML sim. So we'll click uh, create. So uh, in the background, this I don't think this will take too long. Uh, what it's doing is, is executing this code. So we'll look at what the code actually looks like uh, in the back end. This sort of abstracts all of the ability of not writing any code. But when we get into the notebook itself, I wrote the whole this whole lab in code. Um, so we can start to sort of see uh, how the, the coded version looks versus the GUI version. So if you are more advanced and want to get into the technical uh, coding of this and scripting, uh, we'll we'll dive a little bit into that. But this is allowing anybody to really get started is using the the, the TG Cloud here. All right, so now we have our our design schema. Uh, we have our specific graph. So now you should see AML Sim or whatever you named your graph. Um, so now we're in our graph view. What we want to do is click on Map Data to Graph. Perfect. So the map data to graph just is uh, what we're able to do is actually load CSV files. When we downloaded this uh, TigerGraph OSS uh, AML SIM uh, repository, it came with some CSV files. Uh, so what you want to do is click this add data file and then click the plus to upload a file to the server. Um, in this case, what we're going to just do is do an account so accounts.csv, because that's really all we put on to this graph right now. Um, so click accounts.csv. All right, we should see our file here. We have a file in the server. We get a nice little preview. Um, we can see that we do have headers right here, right? So we do want to click this has headers. Now everything's sort of brought back up to the top. We can see our has headers is there. Once everything looks good, this looks good right here. What I'm gonna do is click add. All right, so now we have a file. So this is our, our, our data that we want to uh, incorporate with our graph called AML SIM. What we're gonna simply do is click this map data to file to uh, the, the edge or the vertice. In this case, we'll just click on accounts. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll click on, hmm, which one should we do first? Let's do customer. 
Um, so we have we don't have we didn't we didn't fully design this graph, but uh, what we do have is a customer and a customer customer has an ID. Um, so this is a really simplistic model or simplistic way of modeling your data uh, and putting your data into a graph. Um, as you noticed, we have the CSV files. We're not actually writing any code, but yet we're able to convert the CSV file and do this mapping. Um, this is this is the mapping of how the data is inserted into the graph. Uh, what we're saying is everything from the CSV file uh, from customer ID will go into this particular uh, vertex. Um, the next thing we're gonna do, uh, this looks good, is we're gonna go to accounts and we'll go based in. All right, so this is a little bit unique because you have the source vertex and you have these target vertex. Uh, our source will be a customer and our target will be a country. All right, so that, that's, uh, this is loading the relationship between the customer and the country. Um, and what we'll want to do is the same thing with the customer to accounts. So we're gonna click on the map data file to vertex or edge, go to accounts, and we're going to then go to this edge called has account. And then what we're gonna do is click on the customer to customer, the account to accounts. So this customer has these accounts and this is how the data is going to be mapped into this. Now I don't know if we have, okay, we do have some more information here. So what we're gonna do is click on the mapping again, go from accounts to accounts. And then we have the primary ID is account ID, zero. We have an initial balance and then we have an account type. So it's a very simplified version of this and not the fully complete one, but we'll just do the cheat and we'll have everything ready. Um, so at this point, you'll, you'll see all your data here. Everything's mapped, everything's mapped and good. So what we wanna do is publish our, our mapping. Hit publish. Perfect. So now that we have all of our, our, our data uh, mapped and how it will be inserted into the graph, what we'll want to do is actually load the data. So just go down to load data. Um, leave, that's because I moved a little vertice. All right, we have no data in the graph. What we do want to do is load. So we'll hit, cl click the start resume loading. If you want to delete your data, this is clear graph. Don't, don't click it unless you want to delete all of your data. Click play, continue. And we should see some data stream in here. Feel free to ask questions in the chat. Uh, if you fall behind, what you can do is uh, not worry because we're actually gonna do the full import here and you'll have all the data. But you can see that we have uh, you know, 16,000 vertices, 20,000, so it's going up. I think this has a short delay on here. Um, I think once we, we implement the full kit, it's gonna be in the millions here. So we have uh, 10,000 accounts, 10,000 customers. So probably every customer has a single account. I'm sure there's a way to adjust that in ALM sim because you might as a customer have multiple accounts. Um, but in this data that they provide, it's probably a one-to-one. -one. Um, so now we have some data in here. We're gonna go to explore graph. And what we can do is start to look at some of this. So if we wanna just choose you know, five customers, now we could start to see some of our our data here, and we're gonna we're gonna import the um, you know the full kit here, and we'll we'll really dive into some like more explore graph. Um, so if if you uh, can go to this top button here, click Graph Studio, this top button, it'll bring you back to this main page. Now at this point, what we're gonna just do is import that existing solution that will have everything mapped out. So. The, the point of the manual exercise was just more of you getting familiar if you wanted to do a different use case with some of those buttons, how you would how you would be able to select a vertice, how you'd be able to uh, add attributes to it, how you'd, how you'd be able to then uh, connect a vertice to uh, a vertex to a vertex, um, how to then uh, put data into your server, how to map the data, how to load the data. 
um, and then when you we'll get into some queries. But that should give you some, you know, a really quick introduction to be able to uh, take whatever data you have, start to think about it, and figure out how you might want to put it together into a graph and use TG Cloud to be able to, to design that schema uh, and design some um, interesting patterns. So we'll go to uh, import an existing solution. We'll go to our AML SIM. So this is the, this is the project that you downloaded, AML SIM. Click open. It's gonna say, do you really want to do this? It's gonna get rid of all your stuff. And uh, you say, okay, that's fine. And then it will take, I think it takes maybe about a minute. I don't think it's gonna be too long. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll look at the, you know, the explore graph. And then we'll get to some queries. And some of those queries are actually using some of the algorithms that we talked about earlier. Um, so we're gonna be implementing PageRank as a feature. And then we'll finally get to the Google Colab here. And feel free to ask questions if you have any questions. Session chat, okay. We'll answer some questions. Tiger Graph to other data visualization. So, you know, Tiger Graph's a database analytics engine. Um, I would not say it's a graph. So Graph Studio is the GUI that has some visualization capabilities. Um, but as we'll see, everything that comes out of Tiger Graph is in JSON which means you can you could just call things and have that data and visualize it however you'd want to visualize it. Um, so it's not a visualization graph platform. It's a graph analytics engine um, that you can retrieve that data and easily visualize it however you'd want to use it. If you want to use it in React or D3 components or whatever visualization package you want to use it in, um, it's pretty easy just to fetch the data. So, all right, so we're back in ALM sim. So we just imported the solution. We'll go to design schema. Am I meant to import the entire zipped folder? So you don't want to unzip the, G, the G, .gz file. Um, if you go back to this, this folder AML sim, don't, don't unzip it, just keep it keep it uh, zipped up. So if you ran into it where it didn't work because you already unpackaged this, just download this again and try to re-import it. All right. So we'll go to uh, we'll go to our schema. So this is, looks pretty similar. We had the country, we had customer, uh, we had accounts. Um, we talked a little bit about this that we have send transactions to transactions. Um, and then one, one other thing that we're doing is we're looking at the pattern of accounts, transactions to accounts, uh, and then creating a send to edge. Um, so we don't have to do anything here. You can just sort of hover over uh, and look at the fully completed schema that we put together for this workshop um, and how everything's laid out. What we're gonna actually do is go to load data. We should have everything mapped out. I'm hoping, okay, what's this? Not started, not started. I didn't click the start button. Um, let's click the start button, see if the data all loads. All right, did not. Okay, I know what's going on. So in our server, we don't have, we don't have the data files. That's totally fine. So what we're just gonna do is go to map data to graph. So we'll go back to map data to graph. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go click the add data file. So we only had one, one data file in here and this is you know, this was the accounts one that we put in. Uh, we're gonna upload some more uh, data files. So we're gonna do transactions. And we'll wait for it to upload. Feel free to ask more questions. I'll just look at chat while we're uh, waiting for the upload to happen here. Uh, defining the schema, does Tiger Graph generate an empty template file to be used to load the data? Does Tiger Graph generate an empty template file to be used to load the data? 
Um, I'm not quite sure I understand exactly the question, um, but the, the methodology is that you create your schema and then you have these things called uh, mappings. You're, you're, you're basically mapping how the data, uh, it's like a translator or a pipeline tool. So you have the data coming in in a certain format, whether it's a JSON, CSV, you're, you're streaming through Kafka or anything, whatever you have in the data source, you have to have how the data then is um, you know, put into the graph. And so you have these data mappings. Um, it's a little bit abstracted here, uh, because we're using Graph Studio, um, but you have the data mappings that then show how the data goes into the graph. All right, so let's click the plus button here. So we got accounts, transactions, and alerts. I'll just put this one in there too. Okay, yeah. So it looks like they're all uploaded on the server. So the the reason I was complaining it was just it was just saying the data is not on the server. Um, at this point, we have the data on the server, so just click cancel. And let's go, uh, don't think we'll have to do that. Mm. We're not changing anything. So just go to load data, because we have the files on the server, and we'll click play. Continue. Still getting an error uploading the data after re-downloading the zip file. Um, if you run into troubles uh, and we're not able to troubleshoot it during this workshop, what I can just do is meet you right after the workshop. What we can do is sort of have a follow-up session and knock through any errors that came up. Because um, I do I do want you to be able to have the experience or at least have this workshop under your belt um, as far as something that you can explore and play around with. Um, and so we can, we can definitely meet right after this. So we can see that the data is loading. This is a little bit bigger. Now we're in millions. We have 5 million edges, uh, 1.3 million uh, vertices. And things will get a lot more complex when we go into our uh, explore graph. So what we can do is explore graph. Um, if you want to now, you could double click on any of these and things are going to be populating everywhere. Um, for now, we'll just sort of skip it. We're going to go down to uh, write queries. And what we'll do is uh, install all the queries. So these are the queries that came with the, the import, um, some of the queries that we're going to use to derive some features. And what we'll do is install all queries here. So one, one of the, probably the coolest part about uh, using Tiger Graph when I first got started uh, as a developer and looking at writing these queries uh, was the ability, once you wrote this logic query, something that maybe accepted a parameter as far as a user account or um, you know did some con kind of complex logic, uh, as soon as I was done with this query, I installed it. And when you install a query, it gets compiled down to C++ and then it gets exposed to the REST service. What that means is that you're able to instantly call it uh, from, from you know, any environment. If you want to use uh, Postman, if you want to use your application, uh, all you're simply doing is a REST call. Um, so you can immediately access, uh, after you write your query, uh, you can access whatever that's doing. I can pass it in a, a parameter, it does its thing, it, it returns whatever I told it to return, uh, and then it, it gives me that data back in JSON. So I think that's like the coolest part when I first got started with uh, Graph Studio and Tiger Graph. I was like, oh, that's really cool um, because I was able to instantly actually use, use these algorithms um, or these queries right away. So this does take a little bit of time. See, it says, it says compiling, optimizing, and installing and generating the endpoints. So these are all the things that it's doing in the back end. Uh, to make that possible. So it does take time if you're going to actually install the queries. Um, installing it will make it accessible uh, externally. But if you just run them without installing them, that's totally fine. Um, it just doesn't generate the endpoint that you can start to use externally outside of the, the solution itself. It looks like Philip says the, the platform will be open um, so we can connect afterwards. That's great, thank you. 
And any other questions, feel free to bring them up here. So the last part about this workshop, and I think I gave you the Google Colab. Thanks for sharing it again, Philip. We're going to quickly go over this while this is installing. Oh, of course, it's, it's, it finishes at this time. That's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll get to the collab here shortly. Uh, we'll just briefly mention it. Um, you can actually simulate this whole build within the collab, so you're just hitting play buttons. Um, so that's another way to actually cheat on building this lab as well. Uh, so let's go over some queries. We have, uh, this is a really, probably a little bit more complex than the, uh, the first query I would, I would have you guys look at. Um, you know, but what we're going to do is actually generate some features. So I wrote this query for everybody. Uh, what we're doing is actually going through all of the transactions. Uh, we're using these things called accumulators. Um, so we have sum acum, min acum, max acum, average acum. What it's going to be doing is uh, going through each of these uh, paths, right? It's going from accounts to transactions, accounts to transactions, accounts to transactions. Um, and what it's going to do with the single at is store this attribute on that vertex. Um, so we're accumulating data as we traverse our graph. Uh, and then we're storing that data. And then what I'm doing after that is this thing called a post uh in which that we're actually going to uh, set that, uh, that number into the account. So, you know, right now, if you went to account, we have all of these attributes. Uh, if you were in Explore Graph clicking around, you might've saw that all of the attributes are blank. There's no data, right? That the, the, this data wasn't provided by the solution. Uh, so what we're gonna just do is simply click this play button here uh, and generate the data. All right, so we just went through, uh, yeah, 5 million edges uh, and generated those new features. Um, you know, let's go look at the explore graph. Um, you'll have to click around here to, to learn about some of these, uh, these icons. Uh, but we have hide and go back and, and forth. Um, what we're going to do is, is choose a few accounts to look at. So we're just going to check the accounts button and that will populate some accounts. So we can start to see this particular account. Uh, has a big balance. Uh, they have min, max, uh, average, receive, the account of transactions, uh, receive transactions, send transactions. So there's quite a quite a bit more information that was there that is there now than you know the zeros that were there previously. Um, what we'll do is go back to write queries. We're going to run some of these algorithms, uh, the page rank algorithm that Google uh, you know Google was using. I don't know if they're still using. Um, is basically cal calculating the connections between different entities uh, and then weighting them and then uh, populating that, that weight score on them. And so what we can do is maybe use this as an additional feature uh, for our machine learning model, um, looking at the number of, of, of transactions and connections to accounts. Um, so go to page rank and you click the play button. And then you get this options to do some, some uh, you know, put some, some attributes in here. So uh, in our case, what we're going to do is account. We're going to do send to underscore. Account send to with the underscore. You can leave the other values blank or what they're pre-populated as. And then the result attribute. Where do we want to generate the output of this? We're going to generate the output to um, the attribute called page rank. So after that, click Run Query. Um, and that was faster than I thought. <laughs> That's OK. That's always good. That's always fast. Uh, so we have the top scores. We have this vertice uh, 9982 has the highest ranking. You know, so if, if this was Google and this actually related to a web page, uh, this would have the top score. Um, so what this did was if you went back to Explore Graph, you would see the now as a filled attribute on all of them. And they're calculating the number of connections uh, to, to the specific accounts based off the transactions that they had, um, the transaction history. So the next thing that we're going to do is go to label props. So we're just we're, what we're just doing is picking out a few algorithms. 
that we want to uh, possibly use with our features, feature extraction here. Um, so go to label prop, click the run button. And what we're gonna do is do vtype again. Uh, All right, we're running out of talent time. Um, yeah, let's let's skip this for a second here, and we'll get to we'll get to some of these other queries. So this is a this is this is a simple. You, you, what we can do is we can go through these later um, if you want after the workshop. But what we're going to do is get to to some of these queries and then get to the the Google Colab here. Um, so these are really basic queries. This is uh, if you're writing your first query um, and we want to send in an account. Um, and we want to uh, look through the accounts. So select S from seed where account uh, ID equals that account. So what we're just doing is pulling that information from that account. Um, this is a really simplified version of a query. So what you could do is play with these queries right here, um, which are more um, you know, simplified um, that might be able to give you some of a foundation for you to get started. Uh, so feel free to 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 run these as well. They're they're all installed. Um, I don't have. Oh, let's just let's pull this guy right here. Copy and then run, and then you get all their account information. So how this actually looks is JSON. So this is what you're actually receiving when you make a call to it. Uh, if you went and called this through Postman, this is the endpoint that it will be qu querying, and that's how you would fetch the data. So, so you can write these these different algorithms, or use these different algorithms, or write your custom queries to generate features. Now you have a a, uh, a lot more features that you could use in your machine learning model. Um, what we'll do is quickly navigate, and I'll walk you through this. Uh, feel free to actually utilize this after the workshop. Um, it has everything scripted. Uh, at, what you want to do is maybe just do file, uh, save a copy. And once you save a copy uh, wherever, you can run that locally um, or run that in the cloud so you have your own version of it. So uh, what, what Google Colab is, is a environment. It spins up a server in the background. Uh, it has RAM and disk. Um, you can calculate and do your Python stuff from uh, this environment, uh, cloud environment. This, this is the same demo that we talked about. So we have AML SIM. We have uh, the data. What we do is walk you through the same steps that we talked about today. Um, and then as you go through this, you'll see that we are using this PyTiger Graph beta. So you, what you want to just do is, uh, and this is how you operate this notebook, is you click these play buttons. So you can literally go down this, click play, uh, click play, click play. And I'm just going to walk you through this because we have one minute left. Um, the, the key parts of this is that you want to insert your, your uh, URL for the one that you generated and put your username. Your username's always default as uh, Tegraph uh, and then put your password in there. What we're gonna do then is fetch all of the, the data from that GitHub repository. We're gonna put that data into, um, into data frames. And then what we're doing is, this is the uh, GSQL version of creating that schema. Um, so we're creating a vertex, creating a country, customer, account, transactions um, with all of its attributes. So if you wanted to simulate this, you would just click play, play, play. Um, and then we're doing some LS so you can see how everything's built. And then you, one, the one other element that you'll need is to grab your secret. Um, so this is a tutorial or blog on how to fetch that secret from your, your Graph Studio. You want to enter your secret here because that's going to be used to do those requests. Um, so this is a simple notebook that walks you through. You don't have to do anything except play the play buttons. That walks you through actually utilizing a notebook. Um, you actually can create those queries and install the queries from the notebook itself. You don't actually have to do that in Graph Studio. Um, and then what you can do is run some queries here to do future set extraction at the bottom. Um, with that, I think we're at the top. I think we're at the bottom of the hour here and we're out of time. So uh, thank, thank you for everybody that was here. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, feel free to reach out to me to ask additional questions or follow up. Um, I'm more than happy to connect with each and 
every one of you. Thank you.